What is going on, friends, family, YouTube subscribers, and everybody that's out there that's viewing this channel? Let me just say welcome to the MRM or Modern Renaissance Man channel. And I'm here to do a response to a subscriber. And um, this person, I got their permission on here. Her name is uh, Laura Shelby. And she's been having a little bit of a problem. And some people can find it to be comical, and it is a little bit in a way, so I'm not making fun. But. I'm going to read what she said and I'm going to respond to it, okay? So let's just go ahead and get right on into it. She says, so I need a little help, if you don't mind. I have four kids in the public. They are great, 99% of the time. I have one, I have three girls, one boy. They are seven, five, four, and two. My son, the four-year-old, will wake up early in the morning before anyone else. He know He knows if he wakes up and puts in a movie and chills on the couch, that's fine. If he gets hungry, he's supposed to come and wake me up. He doesn't do that he goes to the kitchen and raise the cabinets and the fridge and free freezer for any and all snacks and sweets he will eat all before anybody wakes up i've tried everything i've talked to him i tried grounding him to his room i spanked him he just doesn't care like he knows he'll get his butt whooped for this when we get up but i don't know if it's worth it i don't know but i can't keep doing this with him I, I, i've resorted to installing latches and padlocks on my cabinet and I've got a bike lock on the fridge after catching him with ice cream one morning. I'm fed up to, I'm fed up, and I don't know what else to do. To top it off, his baby sister, which is two years old, has graduated to big girl bed, and now he wakes up with her. When he wakes up, they both can share snacks early in the morning. Now they team up. I had to lock up my kitchen like Fort Knox because I just don't know what else to do. Any advice? Um. Yeah. Honestly. And I don't want you to take this the wrong way. You are the parent, okay? And I don't want you to feel like I'm coming at you like, no, you are the parent. I'm just saying, you know, you're the parent. And that's exactly what we are. We're the parent. We're not their friends. We're not their buddies. And so what I'm saying all that for is this. I don't want to compare your kids to what I'm about to make this comparison to. There is a show called, like, My 600-Pound Girlfriend or something like that. And everybody sit there and wonder... How did they get that big? Now, it is part of that person's fault that's doing the eating. But after that person can no longer walk and take themselves to the bathroom, how are they getting bigger? Somebody is getting the food for them. So what I'm saying is this. I know that depends on who you are. You don't want to deprive your kids of having snacks. But what I'm saying to you, in your case, if it's that extreme, stop putting snacks in the house. It's that simple. You, you eradicated your problem right then and there. Now, like I said, I know most people are be like, well, you don't want to deprive your kids of it. What is it going to hurt? It's not going to hurt them. Heck, we was freaking lucky if we had something like that in the house. I mean, you're talking about every once in a while where you was able to get a zebra cake or something like that. So my point in saying all that is this. If you take certain things away from a kid, they're going to look for the next thing that they're going to find that's appeasing. So what I'm saying to you is this. Put more fruit and vegetables in your house. Okay, when it comes to um, kids, especially, a lot of times they don't care. You know, one thing the kids are drawn to anyway, even in a woman's breast milk, is the sweetness of it. So I can understand why your kid wants the sweetness. But at the same time, um, there's also a thing that a lot of folks don't know about is that a lot of times when kids keep on eating things like that, of course they like the sweets, but at the same time, your kid could be malnutritioned a little bit. And so what I'm saying that for is this. If your kid keep on eating sweet, you know, with all these high, you know, high empty, you know, calories, these carbs and high sugar and all that, your kids have more energy. They burn that stuff right off, so then they're going to want to go right back to that same process and get that sugar back in because that's what it does. It gives them energy. And um, But here's the thing. Again, if you want to stop your kid from doing that, put other things in that refrigerator in your cabinets. Do you have a bedroom? If you have a bedroom, I mean, come in with the groceries, the snacks that you have, take them and put it in your bedroom that's what, at the time that's what our mom did she took the snacks and she would put them in her room and she would just come out and give it to us every now and then she didn't know she didn't let us know that she had it that's the issue you don't have to let your child know that you got snacks in there because if you do they're going to beg you for it and probably get on your nerves and you end up just yelling at them over it. don't let them know that you even have it you know we bring all the groceries in just do it and if you have to leave it in your car and wait till later on that night when the kids are in the bed bring the snacks in the house because it sounds like your kid is a little a little uh houdini there can break into some stuff but no that's what i would say one number one if it was me because the type of dad that i am it won't be no snacks like that in the house we might just have to go out and go get a snack or something like that but i won't be bringing it in the house um two 
again, keep the snacks in your room at all times. Don't even let the kids know you have it. Every now and then, two or three days, how often you feel like it, bring one out and just give it to them. That's it. If they be like, oh, mommy, where'd you get that from? Just be a parent. Oh, none of your business. <laughs> I don't have to explain nothing to my kid where I got anything from. Just leave it at that. So, um, and the, uh, the third thing is this. Put more fruit and vegetables in your house. I'm not talking about things like a fruit cup, you know, where the stuff comes in a can and got all the syrupy stuff in there. I'm talking about, like, fruit and vegetables. Put it in there. Try it. You know, I, you said you got about four or five kids. Try um, um, buying, like, a thing of apples. Buy, uh, you know, buy some bananas, buy some pears, buy some plums, buy some carrots, you know, buy things that mean most fruit and vegetables you can eat raw, buy cucumbers, whatever, and put them in there and see what your child does. Now, they wake up in the morning and they eat all them fruit and vegetables. I would say, hey, that's awesome. But I do know kids going to want more of the artificially flavored stuff than they are the uh, fruit and vegetables. And at the same time, let your son, whoever you're talking about, go in there and eat a whole apple and see if he don't get full off of that. And at the same time, he's being nutritionally supplied with all those nutrients, vitamins, and minerals, and also the fruit and vegetables as a slow digesting um, carbs that you put in your system. So that means he won't be as hungry so soon and want it back. That's the beauty of it. And then by the time, I mean, gosh, if, let's just say he won't be able to because I can't even. Your son puts down two apples. He's going to be super full. But at the same time, he didn't even eat that many he didn't eat hardly any calories, but yet he's full. Slow digestion, getting his fiber in. Like I said, getting the nutrient, vitamins, and minerals in there, too. So do that. It, 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 it's not hard. I mean, it really isn't, but I understand you might be a stay-at-home mom or something like that. I know all about that because my wife is. My wife was, too, when my kids were growing up. So, um, But at the same time, I mean, we, we had it to where things are set. Like, when it came to things like snacks, like zebra cakes or... Ho-Ho's, I don't know what y'all buy y'all kids, snacks, Cheetos and stuff like that. Those things, in my house, those were something that was earned. That wasn't no part of no daily getting a snack. Or no, they earned that stuff. And I wouldn't give it to them every day. I gave it to them like if they ate their dinner, oh, good job, you ate all your dinner. And then about, you know, an hour later or something, I gave them uh, a brownie or whatever like that. My wife is a baker too, so she baked pretty much a lot of the stuff. But, um, like again... Put it somewhere where your kid can't get to it. Don't even let the kid even know that it's in the house, and that's the issue. The kid knows that it's in the house. Now, I don't know if it's, this is you, so I don't want no one to take offense to it, but if the problem lies in also you being a sweet eater, then that actually is not going to really help because if you, I know most people like their sweets, they like their ice cream and all that, but something that we did in my family is this. Yes, it's definitely going to be cheaper buying a tub of ice cream for $4 at the store and putting it in your refrigerator than going to Dairy Queen and paying $4 for a large blizzard. I know it's cheaper, but what it does, it teaches you discipline in a way. Because what it does is that you have when you get that ice cream from Dairy Queen, you have to eat it right now. It's gone. You know, you can freeze it all you want to, but it's not going to be back to that soft serve texture that everybody loves. So, go out and get the snack. Go to a place where they sell cookies and brownies. Go, I, I'm just saying, but don't go and buy them in bulks and boxes and all that and put it in your house because your child is going to probably try to eat it. It's that simple. I know you said you try spanking and all that, which, um, yeah, I'm not going to go into all that because, yeah, I, I, mm, mm. <laughs> some of y'all that kind of know me know where I'm getting at. But I didn't play around when it came to things like that. I would tear them that butt up and would dare them to go in there and do it again. You know, so, um, yeah, I don't want this to come off as being harsh or like I'm coming at you in a bad way because you guys all know my personality, but... It's just that when it comes to kids, I'm so passionate about kids being structured that I have to put my, I'm just passionate about it. I put my all oof, into it, you know. So uh, anyway, yeah, um, uh, I would recommend that you do those things that I just told you to do. Um, it's not going to be hard because you're the parent. You control what comes in and out of your house. So Miss Laura Shelby, give that a shot. I know you don't want to take things away from your kids. You can add to it. Put the fruit, the vegetables, carrots, cucumbers. They'll probably, they'll probably, you know, like I said, they'll probably like it. And if your child is that hungry in the morning, you go in there and see just fruit, vegetables, and like, you know, carrots and oranges and apples and cucumbers and strawberries or something like that, let them have at it. At least they've been nutritionally supplied versus having these snacks that actually ends up 
having certain chemicals in it that keeps putting the signal in the brain saying I'm hungry. And that's the trick with all that too. Is that a lot of these things that are artificially flavored and have dyes and all these artificial ingredients in them, some of those things in there actually stimulates the brain to keep on sending the signal saying I'm hungry. That's why people can sit there and eat a whole box of cereal or eat like a whole bag of potato chips because you, you, you're never satisfied. The body's going to keep on sending off signals saying I'm hungry if it's not nutritionally supplied. If the body is nutritionally supplied, it shuts that signal off. That's how it works. So again, number one, don't bring snacks into the house, ice cream whatsoever. Number two, if you are going to bring sweets into the house, make sure they're fruit and vegetables, anything like that. Number three, if you don't want to go with one and two, when you bring snacks in the house, don't let your kids see what's in the bag when you bring the groceries in. When you bag your groceries at the grocery store, put all your cakes and snacks all in one bag, double bag it. Bring it in after you brought all the other groceries in later. Or when you do bring it in, just take it straight into your room, put it up in your closet somewhere like that. Don't let the kids even know that you have it. So if the kids even say, Mom, do we have any snacks? Just, I mean, I know people that, well, I don't want to lie to my child, but guys, it's not, I don't really call it, I don't want to say that that's lying. I just, I, no, just no, I don't have, Mom, did you get any snacks? Don't say, no, I didn't get any snacks. Say, no, I don't have no snacks. <laughs> I don't, or put that to you, if you want to feel like you're not lying, say, I don't have no snacks with me. I don't have no snacks on me. Oh, there are no snacks in the kitchen. There are no snacks in the refrigerator, honey. Just say that. Mom, did you buy any snacks? No, honey, there's no snacks in the refrigerator. Mom, did you buy any snacks? Did you see any snacks? Well, no. Okay, then. So if you want to feel me just saying, because people, a lot of my Christian friends are like, you know, they so picky about what they consider to be lying or not. I just, me, the type of parent I was, yes, I got some snacks and you not getting none. Don't ask me. Shut up. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, uh, anyway, again, Laura, try the. I'm going to go over it again. Number one, don't put no fruits. I mean, I'm sorry. Don't put no sweets like that in the house at all, period. Number two, if you're not going to put any sweets in there, replace it with fruit and vegetables, snacks like that, cheese, whatever. Number three, if you are going to get rid of number one and number two and not do it, number three, double bag your snacks, whatever, your ho-hos, your hostess cakes, whatever, honey buns, put that double bag it, come straight in the house, take it to the room, put it up in the closet somewhere. Don't even let the kids know that you have it. Whenever you feel like you want to reward them with a snack, just take it out and go, here, guys, I got y'all a snack. And they say, Mommy, where'd you get this from? Don't worry about it. Leave it at that. You don't have to explain nothing to a kid, you okay? So anyway, I hope that might be something that can help you a little bit there. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'll continue to address it. This is Ty Smith, Minor Renaissance Man. Get ready to check out. I hope you guys all have food, clothing, and shelter. And most of all, I hope and pray that every last one of you guys are in great health. God bless you all. In Jesus' name.